Hello, and welcome to the QDR Crusaders, episode 76 for December 17th, 2013. I don't know why that one was such a tongue twister, but it was. <laughs> My name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer and this week's editor, and today I'm joined by... Burned to one, I'm the special guest coordinator. I'm FlutterGuy317, and I'm the media manager. And we have no Mr. Atmospark today. Unfortunately. Uh, he was out for family reasons. Um... But that is fine because we allow him to do that. And we don't hold him hostage for the podcast. So yeah, yeah, he, he will be he will be out this week. He doesn't have a cage. I mean, no. Bur- burned, you're kind of chained to to doing right. this, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, we, but we allow we we allow Sparky out every once in a while. So yeah. Uh, so um, it was really freaking cold out today. Yeah. Um, we we're recording this on Friday the thirteenth, which is. Whoo, Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, <laughs> I think this is like the second Friday the Thirteenth we've mm, recorded. Yeah, it's gonna go so well. But yeah, it's, but yeah, so so cold out. Yeah, yeah, it's actually supposed to snow where I am uh, tomorrow. It's gonna be like a foot, which is like basically a third of a meter, um, which is crazy. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's 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 nuts. I mean, you know, like I went out today to my car and i the inside of my windshield was just all frost like i I, I got in the car and i was like and i and i got in without looking at my windshield and i looked up and i went oh wow that's (laughs) a lot of frost so i grabbed my like brush thing and like brushed off the top of the car and it like wouldn't come off and then that's when i realized that like all the frost was in the inside Uh, of the window so i just had to sit (laughs) sit there and blast air over it so but like it it had this really cool crystal i should have taken a picture of it why am i so stupid (laughs) you could have shown mildly interesting bro yeah (laughs) well it wouldn't have been mildly interesting it was just snow but like it was it was an interesting looking like snowy pattern like natural crystallization of stuff yeah Uh, but yeah it was in the inside and i was (laughs) and so i turned on the car and my car is a little uh you know like outside temperature gauge Mm -hmm. and it was like negative 14 and i was like oh my god (laughs) actually it snowed here in um, Vancouver, Washington, too, which is, like, super rare. So there was, like, an inch to three inches, and everyone freaked out. Uh. And, like, traffic was, like, to a halt, and it was, it was pretty <laughs> bad. It was really hard to get to school. It it's, took me, like, an hour and a half. It's so weird how, like, as soon as it snows, people just, like, kind of forget how to drive. Yeah, there's a lot of places <laughs> in the U.S. where are just like, I don't know how to deal with snow. Yeah. I didn't buy tires for this. Yeah. I live in Ottawa. Nobody knows how to drive anyway, so it's not a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been wearing shorts per- everywhere. But, you know. <laughs> uh, Personal comments about my own city. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to anyone who lives here. <laughs> We're doing a really but bad learn job. How of, to drive? <laughs> We're doing a really bad job of insulting places. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, technically, it's our own places, though. So yeah. you know. Yeah. So did we insult yesterday, like all of Europe? I forget. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yes. We're really last sorry week. about that. <laughs> yeah. Last the, week. the Danish burned. <laughs> my goodness. We oh got, yeah. We got a, a note. <laughs> On our YouTube, that was funny talking. Guys. I think yeah. I think it was on on the YouTube upload. Um, that was some guy. I think he was joking, but he was like, "You guys made fun of the British." Da, da, da. And it was like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> how how dare you? With this, yeah, dino. never insult Teen. the Queen. <laughs> but yeah, so so everybody curl up. It's, it's cold out. Mm-hmm. Um, curl up by the fireplace. Uh, turn on the episode of CAC. And uh, enjoy. I guess that's what I'm doing right now. Well, yeah. honestly, enjoying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jokes. Yeah, you know. Should have some eggnog. Ooh, or some warm cider. Well, speaking okay. of, like, winter and, like, holidays and stuff like that, um, we're also wanting holiday submissions, is that right? Mm-hmm. Or Correctamundo. upcoming episodes. Um, yep. Something we're asking you guys to do is send us in some of your holiday submissions uh, to our email. Uh, preferably uh, with pieces that you think are pretty or you enjoy or you've even made yourself for our little holiday um, slash pony Christmas thing coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that episode will be... uh, Now, this is a bit confusing. In fact, we even confused Atmos Park today when we were talking about it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) This episode will not be... Because we we air on Tuesdays. So the next three Tuesdays are going to be today, the 17th, then the 24th, and then the 31st. Um, next week's episode, the the one that's airing on the twenty fourth, is not our Christmas episode. I explained it last week because nobody ever releases their Christmas stuff early. So if we make it like or you know holidays, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. not just it, Christmas, if, all holidays. Yeah, exactly, all holidays. Um, if you if we do a holiday episode on the twenty fourth, then immediately the day after 
we release that a bunch of people release you know awesome holiday pieces that we can't feature yeah um it happened with like halloween this year or something like that uh it's happened with a lot of holidays that we've tried to do so we're going to push it back this year by a week so the holiday episode will be airing on the 31st which means you have up until the 27th to send us in uh those holiday pieces so we would very much appreciate it if you could send that to our email also um i wanted to mention the fact that that includes new year's so mm -hmm. if you have cool New Year's stuff, it doesn't necessarily have to be from this year. If it's a good piece of art, then then send us in some New Year stuff. We'll have a big extravaganza of holiday, New Year, all that stuff. And if someone wants to make a New Year's piece for 2014, we could feature that too. Yep. So. Yep. And then uh, I think I think we'll do something special for the for the first one in in 2014. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that a bit down the road. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Cool. Yay! I think that's everything. Make sure to send those in to our email, cutieartcrusaders at gmail.com. We've only gotten one so far, so get on it. And that includes <laughs> questions and stuff, too. Yes. Yeah. Okay, All right. so on to the art. The theme this week is castles. After we had an episode uh, that featured a castle in MLP, which was episode three of season four. Um, oh, okay, there, there's the connection. I can, you lost me there. Yeah, you got me <laughs> lost and then found again. Yeah, right. Castlemania. Castlemania was a great episode. Uh, if you want to check out our spoiler cast, uh, two episodes ago, yes. um, we kind of went over it and stuff like that. So we're not going to go over the episode in this CSC, but we wanted to feature some castle pieces because they're kind of cool. It inspired us yeah. to pick some castle pieces. So the first piece is called The Crystal Empire by Itze. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, I mean, I was going to bring this up near the end because I thought it was a funny fact, but like we just found this out. This is like the only piece on Itze's DeviantArt. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. It's like the weirdest thing. All of his other art is away in storage. Mm -hmm. Except so, for this piece. <laughs> right. So... If by the time this comes out, this piece has magically disappeared, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> because he's been putting stuff away for whatever reason. But um, but yeah, you can see it now, I suppose. Uh, it, that might be why it's not in the favorites folder. Just an FYI. Mm -hmm. But I I I think it's a, I think it's a great piece of art. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like the lighting on it, uh, especially towards the center of the piece. There's kind of this glistening, shimmering. Uh, on I guess it's water going through snow. Um, yeah, it does this. It does a really nice thing in that it it takes light and and it and it makes it bright, but without blinding you. Um, a lot of people are afraid to use the higher ends of the value scale because they can be quite blinding, and you know extremes are not always good. But if you use them in moderation, if you use them correctly, then you can make some pretty amazing things. Um, and also, it can help create realistic scenarios because you know light isn't always going to dim itself so that <laughs> it doesn't hurt your eyes um <laughs> yeah. but like for example in this piece you know the, the reflection off the lake is just a little a little bit there where it's quite bright but you know it's not the focus of the piece so you're not staring at it and having to stare through it you know i think that's a big thing to do with light um you shouldn't have to push through this huge bright light um because that can be quite strenuous on the eyes mm-hmm yeah, it's um really interesting because there's a few of those very bright points in this piece. One is there kind of towards the center to the bottom of the piece on this lake. I don't know if it's water or if it's snow or ice or something like that. And then one is on the, the castle, the crystal castle, obviously. And then you have like uh one kind of on this this dome, which would be the protective shield, I guess, around the the castle. Right. So Is there oh, like yeah. a double dome mm. yeah yeah what it kind of looks mean? Like... <laughs> interesting double dome interesting. all the way <laughs> across the sky yeah yeah that, that's really interesting so the the dome just just refreshing my memory from an entire season ago <laughs> the dome <laughs> was there because of the crystal heart and the crystal heart was creating that which stopped the elements like the, the cold and evil quote-unquote from from entering the the empire right yeah yeah, yeah. i i don't remember exactly but yeah <laughs> i'm pretty sure yeah. that was it and then the heart was gone and then so they had shining over there making right, the dome. right right yeah 
It's interesting, though, because I don't see a tremendous difference in the landscape surrounding it. You know, there's no... It seemed like there was kind of a hard edge, if I remember correctly, where the inside of the bubble was it was almost like summer, and the outside of the bu- bubble was a horrible winter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting that he's kind of chosen to create this bubble as kind of like a symbolic thing, um, where, you know, there's not a lot of hard lines um, for where that bubble would end, and it would suddenly change the climate. So he's taking a different approach with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, I remember from the episode, like, uh, the Cadence was the one who was kind of contributing to the bubble um, with her love magic. Right, she was keeping it. Yeah. She was, she was keeping it up, right. And uh, so, I mean, this could be depicting either, like, the, the inner bubble could be expanding outwards to kind of reinforce the outer bubble, or it could just be a separate inner bubble, or I, I don't know. Interesting. It could just be... Something that's artifacting on the outer bubble too. It's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> that, that, that would be that that that's a good point. Yeah. It could just be light artifaction. Speak speaking of speaking of which, there there is the the bubble is not just something that is placed over this piece. It's it's a part of the piece, and it has um oh burn what what, what would you call that 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 shine on the top of the bubble there? Refractive um, lighting. Refractive. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got some refraction on the top there and and the inner part has some of that too and and it's almost got like a it's almost got like a fading out shadow like the second that the light hits the bubble it it's, it it blocks some of that out um which is which is an interesting touch there but it, you know it is it is a big actual thing within the piece as opposed to making this environment and then going yeah I'll add a bubble on the on top there mm-hmm. yeah it's actually there's a fun little edit that the artist made uh, in the description. It says, who's that sliding down the dome? Yeah, and there's, a... there's an edit with Pinkie Pie sliding down the dome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's adorable. Yeah, so cute. I remember seeing that. That's great. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like I like the way that this this artist has kind of done the, the whole less is more approach that we were talking about when it comes to backgrounds and, and when it comes to landscape pieces in general it, it can be really interesting to see how people handle it because we've always mentioned that you can use that you, you can you don't have to put in all the details because your brain can fill in um when you're not you can fill in the surrounding areas when it's near peripheral vision uh we've mentioned that many times in the show that should kind of be pounded into your head by now <laughs> um but when it comes to this kind of piece where there really isn't a tremendous amount of foreground um, there's a little bit on the rocks, but even those aren't tremendously detailed in in themselves. Um, it's it's interesting to see how that kind of plays out because again we, we see this lesser detail. The trees themselves are just little brush strokes. Um, obviously, the 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 actual castle itself and a little bit of the water around there is more detailed and it draws your eye in. But it's interesting to see that kind of less is more approach being applied to the entire piece. Mm-hmm. I think it, I think it still works. Yeah, definitely. There's not really a particular focus in this piece, except maybe the castle. But even still, it's like there's no no part of it that should be really more detailed than the rest of it. So it it kind of makes sense for the the artist to take this whole like, especially because it is a, a vast landscape piece, and there's a little bit of atmospheric perspective off like in the distance on right. the left hand side or whatever. But for the most part, then the rest of the piece. It's kind of, you know, it makes sense for the detail level to stay the same, kind of. Yeah, I would say this that this art piece encourages wandering eyes. Um, obviously, the first thing that you'll look at when you, when you first take a look at this piece is probably the castle. Because, you know, it's a big castle in the middle of a, a landscape piece. Uh, but it's not necessarily like the castle demands or, or commands is probably a better word. Mm-hmm. It's not like it commands attention. It's just a big castle, and that's why you look at it. But it's not like it, you know, it keeps your eye on it. It kind of encourages you to go, oh, well, there's a dome there, and, and at the <laughs> bottom of the dome, there's a, oh, there's a nice looking lake down there, and it kind of helps you spread your your view across the entire in, the entirety of the entire of the entirety of the entire piece. <laughs> Great of the thing. Let me just go. To, let me just go to <laughs> thesaurus.com. <laughs> Jeez, uh. burned. <laughs> Burns been absent Very on this quiet. one. I've just been, just been listening. He did bring Very up even... the Pinkie Pie part. That's which, true. Which is really He funny. brought up the most important part, yeah. which is the hilarious pony sliding off the side of yeah. it. <laughs> I'll bring up um, 
the use of color is something I've kind of just been waiting to see if you guys bring up. But um, uh, I'd like to point out that this piece is basically just a, a slightly muted rainbow. Because <laughs> every there's pretty or it's almost the, the presence of almost every single color. I mean, if you look at just the bottom like edge of the frame where the rocks are, it's like purple to peach to violet to blue to gray um like everything's in there and then in the center of the piece when you have um like the little, the center ground kind of in the horizon almost with the town on the right and the trees on the left again like from that spectrum of color from left to right is like purple pink yellow peach uh, and then there's some greens in there and now some more reds and then browns and then greens and oranges like and it, in the bubble again like above canterlot there's this huge spectrum of colors the artist isn't just using a couple colors here and there to like create focus there's so many colors that it's almost ridiculous but they're all really muted and really subdued to where they're not over the top and how they all blend together it creates um like they all kind of just mix to create something that's still like pleasing to look at but there's a crazy amount of colors you know there's not it wasn't something that was simple that the artist did when he was mixing a few colors like there is a presence of the uh, pretty much the entire spectrum here yeah, I would say I would say that probably just from an instinct and looking at the piece as a whole, I think probably blue and yellow are probably the biggest indicator biggest things that stand out to me with with highlights in in red and green and things like that. Um and what's really interesting about that is that's kind of you know, it matches up a lot with very common color blindness. Um <laughs> which I I would be interested to see the people who have that kind of red green color blindness I, I think that the piece wouldn't really change that much for them. Obviously, the middle ground where we have highlights in red and, and highlights in green would, would change. But um, it's interesting because this piece is very heavily based in, in those blues and those and those yellows and those variations of them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually kind of cool as um, color can also be taken into account when you're thinking about composition. So, uh, like, when talking about the term composition, there's all color also applies in there because it's or major major areas of color make up certain aspects of composition so if you like kind of step back or um make the piece smaller i guess on your monitor it would be the cheat for that <laughs> and zoom zoom out on the the art piece or whatever the major areas of color are the center where you have like the big bright red and pinks and yellows mm -hmm. um and then also across across from that so kind of creating a plus shape is the horizon that's also orange and then the other uh kind of two major areas of color are the purples and blues that you mentioned in the top left and right and then the bottom left and then that river and then on the bottom right there it's a little much it's much more muted you know so that's there's that snow in there that's yellow and whatnot hmm. but there's there's major areas of color throughout this entire piece that creates basically how it's made up with yellows and purples that can, are really apparent when you make the piece really small because you can see um the major color like kind of used over the entire thing i guess because when it's taking up your entire monitor it's kind of hard to see what what every single color is doing if that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah actually it's it's interesting because i just zoomed out and uh if you do that if the piece is still up <laughs> and you can see it um there are like these these patches of like purples and yellows and there's a green patch and a blue patch and stuff like that it's really cool yeah, I encourage you to do that with your own work when you're making stuff and you're looking at like composition, how much color you've used to really like zoom out and see what uh, the color and everything's doing. And if it's really muddy and not making a lot of sense, then maybe that's something to consider. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So we're going to move on to our next piece, which is called Calm Before the Storm by David M. Ryan. Uh, and this is a smaller piece. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. it's also fairly new. Well, I mean, you know, it's one of his newer pieces. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I enjoy this piece for its colors. Um, mm -hmm. I, I have always, I've always stated that I, I, I like not necessarily monochromatic, but you know, very, very analogous. similar <laughs> yeah, analogous colors. There we go. That, and, and in this piece, obviously the main focus is on these pinky, reddy, um kind of uh, kind of tones um now speaking of analogous colors i also enjoy um when there's kind of something that breaks that mold in the piece it's just a little detail um you can actually see it in my own pony's design um it's got you know yellow orange red and then there's that blue kind of sticking out 
and I really like that. And in a similar vein, in this piece, there's the red, and there's the yellow, and there's the pink, and the peach, and all that kind of variations on the color, and then you've got Chrysalis, and she's green. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, it's a little bit, it sticks out. And you've got Cloudsdale, which has a little bit of blue. And that kind of sticks out. Not too much, but it, it's amazing how much it can draw your eye away from the castle. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny, because we're featuring something that draws your eye away from the castle. Yeah. It's interesting, because if you remove Chrysalis from this piece, you have basically the traditional primary red, yellow. Oh, wait. No, that would be, yeah, red, yellow, blue. Yeah, red, yellow, blue. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, making up basically the background. Um, but then you add chrysalis <laughs> in there with the green, which is a uh, secondary color in that, that color wheel. And uh, it kind of definitely draws your eye away from everything else in the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a big area because chrysalis and Cloudsdale are like right next to each other. So there's definitely a big area that kind of dr like drags your eye over to the right because of just those changes in color. Mm-hmm. It's also the direction too, like those little spikes and mm -hmm. mountain things. Little, the little direction of those directions. also gives you um, a sense of movement. Canterlot's on the right side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Things, yeah. It's also how the canterlot is built and placed. How you have like those three, um, what do you want to call those towers? They're also going in like an upward motion, starting from, uh, like kind of upward fashion, really. So you have smaller yeah, like, and larger, larger. If you if you were to like encapsulate it it would yeah. create the same shape as the spikes yeah which is, it's, which is it's, really the cool. castle itself has the same sense of going up mm -hmm. same with the like right. the stairs at in um cloudsdale this whole mm -hmm. this whole piece is kind of built around that whole idea of going from the Maybe bottom from left less to the, right very dire it's very directional yeah yeah which is a yeah really cool mm -hmm. yeah I, I would even say like the spirals do that as well yeah more subtle though <laughs> by rolls in the uh, on the Canterlot. on the castle yeah oh they there do. we go they definitely this, do, yeah. it's tiny <laughs> um, yeah yeah also yeah. the clouds give that sense too um and how they do that is on the left hand side you'll notice how the brush strokes are a bit more sweeping and then on the right hand side they're starting to bubble up and create kind of that more round right. cloud sense mm -hmm. and air and smoke uh will do that it'll start moving like you know quickly and then as it stops it'll start doing that um like rounding what do you ever want to call it into itself and you know, yeah so it's like creating a circle or whatnot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no this this piece is, is is got some really interesting ideas behind it and it's one of the reasons why the second that you brought it up burned i wanted to feature it um you know it's got the colors it's got the direction it, it's got these you know the these interesting aspects to it but it's also got something that i'm not sure is intentional but i'm gonna say it is remember <laughs> Was it last episode or something? I said something along the lines of, I don't know if the art artist did this intentionally, but I'm going to say they are because I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> um, it was the black bars last episode on the top and the bottom of that one piece. Yeah. Um, th this episode, I'm, I'm going to again give the artist the benefit of the doubt and say it was really interesting to have this white border around the entire piece. Because what I think it does is it, I think it makes it look like a traditional piece of art that might hang up on a wall um you know it's a very common frame it's more of like a modern frame i suppose it maybe the influence of ikea on our cultures <laughs> has, has led us to have these white frames but um it does it does look like it yeah no i'm glad you brought it up that's actually a point i wanted to make because framing something can actually give something like a completely different feeling it gives context so mm -hmm. like purposely placing this in a white frame um, gives it a completely different feel and a completely different sense. It does something to the piece. The same thing with the black bars in our last episode. Um, because it, it is placed there and it's done intentionally. Whether the artist did it intentionally or not, um, it is creating an impact on how we view it. I mean, if it didn't have frames, we're so used to looking at pictures on DeviantArt that we kind of ignore everything else ar this around it, that kind of odd, gr like, mint green around everything, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We kind of just ignore that or when we open it up because we're so used to seeing it. But when you purposely place it into a frame, it gives it a different context and it gives it a different meaning. Um, it definitely gives a different feel to this piece. piece. It m feels much more like, like kind of a little traditional piece of art or something that you would see hang on a wall because we associate that with, you know, something hanging on a wall, something being presented for us to look at. Because that's what the frame does. When as soon as, if you just have something and like hanging on a wall or a picture, you know it has completely different context. But as soon as you place it into a frame, you've now given it meaning, and you've now 
um, like said to whoever's looking at it, this is meant to be looked at as a work of art, as a piece. It's the same kind of context with a pedestal. Um, and even throughout art since like ancient, like Greco and Roman stuff, placing something on a pedestal instantly gives it meaning. Um, it's that same context with a bust. So like if you just have a sculpture of someone's head or face or something, and it's just like it's a sculpture, but as soon as you place that thing on a pedestal, it is now someone important. It is now something important. Um, it, it that pedestal gives it meaning, and it's the yeah. same thing with the frame. Mm -hmm. It gives it meaning, context, whatever. Yeah, um, it's a different. There's two different kind. There's two different. It's two different types of yeah completely. emphasis, but yeah. they're both emphasizing the thing within it. And I think a lot of a lot of the time with artwork, the the framing, um, kind of helps to keep the artwork on its own too mm -hmm. you know if you if you put up a piece of art with no frame on it a lot of times it, it might depending on the background it might blend into the background um and, and for more complex pieces obviously you don't want to do that at all yeah, right. you know if you had if you had a complex painting hung up in, in a home and you had flowery wallpaper behind it you wouldn't want the flowery wallpaper interfering with this wonderful piece of art so you put a frame around it mm -hmm. um so that it it, it isolates it and that's what emphasizes the the art to you which is funny because the only painting i own is frameless um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah point is as an artist you should be aware of that yeah yeah it's interesting it's a... sorry go on nah I... oh okay worth this. <laughs> uh i was gonna say it's interesting <laughs> how like subconscious a lot of uh the influences that frames have on a piece are because um, when you when you look at a piece like this, for instance, it's a plain white frame. You don't really think much of it. You don't really like think, oh, you know, there's a frame there or whatever. But you look at this piece and it's surrounded by that frame. And subconsciously, you know, you, you put meaning to the piece and kind of look at it in a different light. Um, and it's, I guess the same thing with a lot of other pieces. It's like if you look in detail in it, obviously you're going to say, oh, yeah, there's a frame there and stuff like that. But normally when you're just looking at a piece... <clears throat> It's it's influencing you, but not in a way that you would normally like say. Okay, this is why it looks like mm -hmm. that. Great mm -hmm. job, by David. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, before we move on, yes. <laughs> something else to bring up that we've also mentioned in previous episodes, especially to do with with the topic of framing, is breaking that normal frame. There's lots of pieces we featured, like a. Uh, was it lantern or fire and like in our fire episode with the or like even in the ender pony i forget the name of that artist uh you know the name of that artist Sorry, remember yes well? yes what's his name again maybe again. give me a second mm -hmm. mew meow meow yeah yeah meow. Me yeah Where, whatever um, that name is god damn it <laughs> <laughs> that artist Fifty thousand ways to say it <laughs> she loves breaking the the artist loves breaking the breaking the frame oops i hit my microphone <laughs> doing something doing something odd um and basically messing with that sense of you know something that's in a perfect or square border and the aspect ratio or that thing of like a monitor or picture frame it breaks that makes it um pseudo 3d like fake imitating like 3d or popping out makes it almost like a a different it gives a different context or whatever but anyway, i just want to like bring up that point that um there's more ways you can kind of mess with that sense of something being framed you know mm -hmm. anyway yeah one last thing before we move on. Uh, <laughs> I really like the way that, that um, David M. Ryan did the clouds in this piece just because it, it gives it kind of a, an airiness to it and uh, mm -hmm. almost a mysterious kind of sense to yeah. the piece. This is, again, one of those things, digital painting. Not a lot of artists, like especially pony artists, will think of this digital painting and stuff, you know, and how it's, how it's made. Mm -hmm. um, but, again, like, look... I encourage you to go look at this piece, look at the colors, look how it's painted, look how there's other, like, there's colors on top of colors. Like, you have yellow and orange on top of pink, and on the bottom you have, like, red and browns on top of that deeper brown and whatnot. Like, there's a lot going on, and there's a lot to look at. Yep. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next two pieces, which are both by Divinian, who has done a lot of castle pieces, actually. Uh, but we chose two pieces from him. Uh, you couldn't decide. I know. <laughs> There's so many good ones. So the first one is called Dance of the Windigos, uh, which is a really interesting take on, I believe that is Canterlot Castle. Um, and Spike and is that Rarity and Twilight kind of on their way to the castle. And, and Anonymous Pony X looks like 
Ant Orange? <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. Anyway, anyways, um, it's, I don't know, it's a request for someone, so maybe it's an OC. <laughs> Could be. Anyways, um, yeah, the castle in this one, the, the nice thing is the previous two, there's obviously been castles, and castles are big freaking structures, so it's not like castles are going to be something that's super in the background. But there's something very nice about this one in that we definitely have a big focus on the castle. Mm -hmm. I think this is the only one of our pieces, well, debatable, <laughs> but this one's got the most focus out of all of them on the castle. Um, and it's a really interesting style on how they showed Canterlot here. Cause it's a lot wider than I remember, <laughs> <laughs> or at least at how it's portrayed um, in, in, in other art pieces, which is a good point because, you know, we always see it in the show as this very tall, very thin thing hanging off the side of a mountain, and then you get in there and you're like, wow, this is huge. <laughs> where did yeah. all this space come from? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there, there, I'm, there's some sort of trope about that where the inside look is much bigger than what it looks like on the outside. Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but... <laughs> Quiet you. <laughs> but yeah, like, the, the, it's, this artist just seems to have taken a more um, consistent, it's not the right word, but it's, it's, he's trying to get it to match up with the, how the inside looks. And this looks like much more of a legitimate, um, legitimate scenario, you know, even it, it still looks tiny. <laughs> yeah. There's so yeah. many things. In Especially in a lot of episodes where they're like walking through like that, like alleyways or whatever, like streets of Canterlot, like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And where when Rarity stays in Canterlot, can Canterlot, like, it's f freaking huge inside, you know? And there's yeah, a lot yeah. of scenes where it's, like, looking into, like, the depths and whatnot. There's a huge disconnect. <laughs> yeah, especially because, yeah. like, if you look at um, it from the outside, you can you can sometimes see, like, Celestia or Luna, like, visibly, and the whole castle and stuff like that. And it's, like... And they take up, like, <laughs> only a, a, a hundredth of it. Yeah. It sounds small, but when you think about a city, <laughs> yeah. you don't take up a hundredth of a city. Yeah. <laughs> You take up like a one billionth of a city, <laughs> so yeah, it is an interesting style. And this this artist um, does a lot of uh, different styles with Canterlot, um, but this style reminds me a lot of like a Disney kind of thing, like an Aladdin feel to it. Um, very similar to the Children of the Night kind of style, I would say, with the castle at least. Um, but it's it's definitely interesting to see these different takes on Canterlot, just because you know there's this one vision of it in the show, um, but it might not have always stayed that way, and uh, it's kind of cool to see what artists will put into it. So something that else that's really cool in this piece is the whole Windigos thing up in the clouds. Um, yeah. I really, I really oh, do love that. Yeah, I, I, I like, I like. I mean, there's, there's a split in this piece. Um, again, it's kind of like a, a, a diagonal split. Um, for the most part, going from bottom left to top right. Um, and this, this upper half of the split, um, is very different from the lower half, and it's got these really icy feel to it. Very, very blue. Uh, lots of these windigos flying around and mm -hmm. and water rushing down from there. I'm just, I'm just, yeah, it's water. Yeah. Um, and you know, like m atmospheric perspective on the icy mountains in the background, and and darker things on the left hand side. So it's interesting to see the split in this piece. But I I really like the way that they handled the blues, um, and and it looks it looks really nice. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, looks very icy, which I think. Is an interesting take because technically it's still just a rock, not an ice cube. <laughs> um, but but I like I like the fact that it looks icy, like almost like a big thing of ice. Yeah. Mm. Gives that it gives that sense of cold, you know, mm, which yeah. is good because the windigos are kind of like they freeze things, don't they? Yeah. 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 Um, it's interesting because like the top half of this piece is a very very cold feeling to it. It uses a lot of these cool colors, the blues and the kind of the cooler whites and stuff like that and then the bottom half is a very warm piece you got like greens and yellows and oranges and stuff like that so it's an interesting split like you said it, it does split kind of like right along that direct diagonal um i definitely think that whole sense of iciness that you're that you're getting is like definitely intentional i mean because it it gives you that feeling uh, that the entire top is icy so i definitely think uh divinian like wanted that because with the windigos like they're that kind of that icy spirits that freeze things, you know. Um, 
so the, it's kind of like there's a story being told here you know like the bottom bottom half you have uh like spike and the ponies like coming up to canterlot and now seeing the scene of things being frozen and you know something happening um because like you can even see like snow swirling around in mm-hmm. there you know i just yeah. realized that i made a mistake those aren't twilight and rarity that is vinyl and octavia <laughs> uh oh yeah and i i'm guessing that that's another music pony oh, okay and there's also a pony running away from the castle on the trail that's like a dark like just a shadow oh yeah you know? oh yeah I, z- I zoomed in that's most As definitely bad things activity. are happening yeah still looks like ant orange <laughs> <laughs> yeah for the record well that makes a little bit more sense because now it's no longer like well what is spike doing up there if twilight is down there yeah um yeah i don't i don't i, I guess this is a critique but i don't really i, I don't really know what the story is here i i it's not terribly conveyed well i don't know i don't like critiquing stuff too heavily but (laughs) i i just that's the first thing that comes to my mind when i look at this piece when i look at the characters of this piece obviously the piece is a wonderful piece it's made spectacularly Mm -hmm. but um the characters of this piece is just kind of like well there's some ponies (laughs) (laughs) oh look spike yeah he's got a travel thing he's traveling to canter lot Mm mm-hmm Okay. That's, that's kind of like the gist of what I get, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I would imagine that the musician ponies visit Canterlot often because they have to play at concerts and stuff. I mean, you look to the comments, and one of the first comments I see is, I get a real story depth to this piece. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it speaks to everyone differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I definitely take the kind of the opposite opinion of yours. I kind of get a really deep story in this when I'm like looking at it and giving it context because I mean you only get as much story as you can get the context out of it um so like everyone's story is obviously going to be different um there's only so much you can do to kind of tell out and lay a story and you can lay out a story much more detailed um than like than in some others but I mean like I was saying earlier you have um like ignoring the ponies down below because I can't really give a context to them they're just they're like walking up to Canterlot, but like Spike looking on to Canterlot, and now Canterlot being a completely different composition and color to everything else, and then you have the Wendigos in the top. Like it gives this sense of movement and of trouble. And like from watching the show, we know Wendigos aren't the nicest things ever. <laughs> um, so I mean, there is some greater story being told that I can kind of see in this. Um, but as is what it is, indefinitely, you know, it's not spelt out, but. Yeah, it's... I still feel like there's a greater story being told, and as you look at it, you can kind of, you can see it and get a sense of it, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh, it's very, it's a very personal preference uh, based, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it. I mean, you don't get any details or much details from it, like story wise, but I mean, there's kind of an overarching kind of thing that you can get from it. Like, yeah, there's there's something happen happening, and as you look at it, it's hard to mistake, like. You wouldn't make the mistake, like, when, when you're looking at it, like, oh, you know, the Wendigos are having a nice party and people are happy to see them. <laughs> Tea party. Yay. When it's, things are freezing and, like, like, it blop, like things are not, and it's completely opposite of what's down below. And you have that, if you notice that super subtle dark pony running away. Mm-hmm. But even if you kind of look at Spike, you know, he looks kind of surprised and his hand's out, like, what what's this? Yeah. What's going on? Yo. <laughs> yeah. What's going on up in Hizzle? <laughs> Uh. hey guys Rainbow Plasma here um, as we're moving on from this piece I'd like to really request I mean we, we tell everyone to go check out our favorites folder all the time but this piece especially uh, was very hard for me to fit in the video correctly um, I couldn't fit it large I couldn't fit it small without it looking weird so I, I settled on having that side by side view but the amount of details in this piece is pretty spectacular so I would really really encourage you to go check out uh, Dance of the Windigos by Divinian uh, on his DeviantArt because uh, up close more so than any of other, other piece today uh, it, it's much better uh, up close so uh, yeah definitely go check that out on his DeviantArt thanks all right so we have to move on to our last piece um, which is called once Upon a Time in Equestria, again by Divinian. And this is a very interesting uh, look at, I guess it's a pre canterlot Equestria. So this would be possibly the old castle. This looks like it could be the Castle Mania Castle. Uh-huh. Although the scenery doesn't really match, but then again, it also like a thousand years old. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but yeah, this seems to be very, very old uh, Equestria here, where we have obviously different scenery, but that does it. It does seem to me like at least a very similar style to the Castlemania Castle um, that was shown there. When was this made? July. Probably mm -hmm. not the Castlemania Castle, no. <laughs> but perhaps, but perhaps an interpretation of the castle that we see in the Everfree yeah. Forest. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. It, this is in the description. He says, "I'm guessing Everfree Forest wasn't that that big back then, or the ruins were actually on the other side of it." Uh, da -da -da -da. I will be very unhappy if they show this castle fully intact in season four, which they did not. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's falling apart. So yeah, yeah. there yeah. you go. It's it's interesting because in Castlemania, um, the castle itself was. I mean, it was still in ruins and whatnot, but it wasn't completely surrounded by the forest. So it's entirely possible that, like back before the forest kind of took over, that this is what the castle could have looked like. <laughs> you know what's funny about this piece? This piece gives me a, a, a funny little story in my head because there's a big castle. There's not really a town around it. There's like a couple houses. There's like a windmill. There's a river and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For some reason, I get the feeling that like almost like Celestia and Luna just like made a castle, right? Or like found a <laughs> castle, like put on royal gear and started walking around being like, so we're princesses. <laughs> and like these people are just like walking out and being like, like look at that! Look at that! Like one stallion with like the red hair. He's just like, what? Like what? Yeah. Like, what is that thing? Like people are just, just like kidding. walking around, like like almost, almost like she just randomly came down one day. And was just like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm the princess, and everyone's like, okay, yeah, th that makes sense. Sure. I wouldn't really argue if she could raise the sun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's just yeah, for some reason it just seems so funny to me because I guess I, I just always envision castles having some sort of town around it. Um, oh, and I was going to say, they totally did show the castle completely intact in Twilight's flashback. Oh, yeah. You know. Ah, yes. They did. Yeah, that's true. That's and they, true. like, well, flew I... around it, and we got a really awesome cinema, cine, cinegraphic, whatever the heck, view of it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Divinian, but your <laughs> dreams were dashed. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a lovely piece otherwise. Yeah. Mm hmm no, no, really it, like, it really is spectacular. I really like all the little ponies, like in the bottom left of it. You have like a surprise, and then Firefly. Mm -hmm. It's a cute little way of including them. Yeah, because it's like and then ancient Equestria. You know, get it? Uh, mm -hmm. And then what appears to be Derpy. Yeah, looking at the castle. With some sort of. Oh, that's her wings. Never mind. Derpy is omnipresent. <laughs> yes, of course. Always. Derpy is actually f fifth Alicorn princess. <laughs> yep. She just hides her horn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With magic. Yeah. See, mm -hmm. she's existed all throughout time. Time, because like this, uh, that's pink-haired Celestia. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Can can we just yeah, all sorry. agree that we all want to see this at some point? Like, mm -hmm. they've shown <laughs> they've shown like younger Luna, and people have come up with theories about how she has less power. Therefore, she appeared younger, and her hair was just like that light blue. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, the power of this fandom, if they're gonna show a, Cel a younger Celestia, it's gonna have that hair. Like we've. We're, we've all come it to that conclusion, right? Better, yeah. Like, and it better. <laughs> I am a fan, and I demand rights. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that was kind of, uh, you know, when they showed the flashback, that a lot of people got upset about that. <laughs> yeah, but Luna also had her mystical woo yeah, hair. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. So I don't know. Um, I, th I think there's a lot of there's a lot of story opportunity mm -hmm. in My Little Pony because. They've left so many things open to being like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're immortal and we've lived here for thousands of years. So that, first of all, opens it up to, like, so many stories. You could you could have a spin-off series with just, like, all the stuff that Celestia and Luna did before the main six. <laughs> oh, my God, do that. Oh, my God, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you could, like, there's also, like, you know, pre-Discord era and, you know, pre-Discord era when I'm assuming that they were still princesses. To whatever mm -hmm. um and How you know all, all they've got so many wide variety of vast crazy times that you could go in that it you know obviously they can't explore them all because the show mm -hmm. is more about the main six but it leaves it so open to the fans to be able to do that and, and envision scenarios like this when perhaps they weren't quite as power like as you know revered <laughs> it was more like Oh yeah, you're our leader. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And then there's mm -hmm. just like a bunch of peaceful town around it, as opposed to Canterlot, you know? Yeah. Although that castle, my goodness. Yeah, I know. Just kind of. I mean, you could, you could really spread like the, the wealth castle. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think that castle's really cool. He used a bunch of um, like really old 
like or not really old he used a bunch of references from really old castles um there's uh because something we did in my last art history class was we really looked at ca castles and like what area and whatever castles are from and what technology was basically developed and learned um and those things on the bottom left of the castle those mm -hmm. kind of little spire things that have little um arms holding up uh holding up the castle they're called flying buttresses mm -hmm. because buttresses are what give a castle strength and basically hold up the walls so you can have more windows so those flying buttresses were invented to have even more windows because when you have the basically the support on the outside of the castle you can shove even more windows on, on the in-between in there and that's during the gothic era yeah fun fact <laughs> buttresses, <laughs> <laughs> buttresses. Uh, but it's yeah. it's interesting if you do look at like um castle development and history and stuff like that because before flying buttresses architecture was a lot darker on the inside and like there you know there were other types of buttresses but nothing that was uh like this style or that could could uh support castles with that many windows yeah um yeah i'm sorry you you're, you're all going to have to stop saying buttresses <laughs> <laughs> nope i can't stop giggling this is <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! I, I can't, I can't fathom why you would find that word funny. I mean, it's just, it's, know, they're just buttresses. It. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's actually old school looking buttresses. buttresses on the on the front outside with that little like what is that little walkway? I think there's Luna up there too. I mm -hmm. can't really see. It's really small. Mm -hmm. But that's what old school buttresses look like. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't really cram a lot of windows up in there. Yeah. Uh, Don't cram anything into your butt dresses. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Damn it, Mary Plasma. Think of the children. Okay. <laughs> oh my. Um, something that's really cool in this piece uh, is there's a ton of things that are flying in the sky behind the castle, which I would assume to be dragons. So uh, it kind nope, of wrong. No. no. <laughs> They're horses dragons? with wings. <laughs> yeah. So those no, are clearly would... Pegasuses. Is are they? If you, if you I don't know where in. you get dragons. If you, if you zoom in, well, there, there's yes. one pony, but then. The rest, all the little, little specks. Oh, you mean to the right? To the right. The wings look way too big to be Pegasi. Oh, I would debate dragons. It seems a bit extreme to suddenly go to dragons. Birds. <laughs> maybe birds, maybe birds. Nope. Ponies. Or ponies. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm in the middle then. Nope. I don't you're, think you're nope. crazy, but Just, I think nope. dragons is a bit crazy. Shut Your up. Your opinion's wrong. Aww. Ponies. Aww. Just, nope. Just like my opinion was wrong last week about orthogonal. Uh, it was wrong. Because <laughs> uh, we were talking about art, so you were clearly wrong. <laughs> wrong. I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> <laughs> Doth thou dirty mine glove? <laughs> Sorry, are we making fun of the British again? Eh, possibly. <laughs> British. Um, and on that note, questions. Yeah, let's do some questions. Let's do some questions. Uh, let me find the questions first. Okay. Burned. No, you know what? Burned, you do the questions. I have to do the questions? Yeah, you, you should it's do been the so questions. Long. Oh, yeah, what's going on here? All right. Uh, so our first question is, you are each in the running to become mayor of Ponyville. Why should we vote? Why should we vote for you and why? <laughs> um, uh, okay. Should, let's why should change we that vote to for should you? We... Question mark. What? Who put that in the document? <laughs> Damn it, Atmos Park! <laughs> you're not even here, and you're screwing us up. Uh, yeah, let's just say, let's just say, why should we vote for you? Yeah. yeah. Sent in by I am not. The running, you're reaching okay. the running. You're reaching the running to become mayor of Ponyville. Why should we vote for you? Yeah. Mark. By I am not. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nocturnal Pony. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I love you. Uh. <laughs> uh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like politics. <laughs> um, because clearly I'm always right. <laughs> okay. And burned is the best, and burned is the greatest. So there's always that. That's uh, pretty much my... not any reason why not to vote for me because I'm my... the best. <laughs> yeah. My my, 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 res my resume already has this podcast with you three weirdos on it. So <laughs> if I can control you three, I'm pretty sure I can control Ponyville. Yeah. No. That's basically just a dictatorship. Don't vote for him. <laughs> I don't um, know if Pony what? Hitler's an appropriate joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Dick, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Did, so, did we just? Yeah, get a... it's a mayor. It's a dictator. I mean, technically, it's kind of a dictatorship in Ponyville too. You don't no, see any other politicians. She just like 
Well, we She's don't know. She's clearly the... voted. She was clearly voted for with like we don't the know that, tallies though. or something. You know? I mean, I mean I'm assu- we're assuming that she was voted for. But then I wouldn't be a dictator if I got voted in, and I'm just explaining why I should. Yeah. Because nope. I've already dealt with you three weirdos. <laughs> no, nope. I'm the best. I'm gonna say. Can we just agree that neither Burned or I should ever be mayor of anything? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just for the best. I mean, if you guys were both like co-mayors, that could end in oh. like disaster. 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 <laughs> Celestia. <laughs> what? I don't know. Burn's gonna become what? Celestia. You get to be yep. Luna, which I think is better. That's, <laughs> no that's offense cool. to Sunbutt, but you know. F- fandom. I get to be Moonbutt. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Moonbutt. Um, I'm down. I'm down for being Moonbutt. When this turn into what pony are I, you gonna can be? Can I be Cadence then, or? Uh... Yeah, you can. All right. <laughs> ha ha! That much gets to be Twilight. <laughs> none of us are just very good at um, politics or anything in general. No, so none of us care. Just, <laughs> yeah, none of us are really. Us. We're terribly apathetic about politics. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Anyways. I mean, I would give Other out. Other than the fact that I'm the best, I got nothing. I would legitimate, get... legitimately, like straight up speaking, I would, I would probably say Flutter Guy would be best at it. I would, even though he would hate doing it. I would give out free iPods and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, in friendship is witchcraft. Free iPods <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, that's yeah. All right. Next question. All right. Our next question is: What is your favorite fan work? Besides art, as in fanfic, radio play, or comic, and why? By the Met Bobs. Oh, by the Met Bobs. Um, I'm assuming that this is a specific work, like not just like a category. Like, right, right, yeah. right. I think, I think, it, yeah, specific work. Hmm. I'm gonna have to say, uh, it's it's a close one between friendship with witchcraft and the whole Flufflepuff thing. Like everything involving Flufflepuff. So it's animations in general derive from art, though. So but I think it's, but it's, I think it'd be safer it for you to do an say animation. Friendship. So I yeah, it'd be safer for you to just say friendship. Is weird well, see, friendship. actually, there, that's just this question is a fallacy because it says it is. besides art and like fanfic and radio plays and comics no, are art. art. Yeah. So he means besides visual, visual art, art. Sta- static visual. Yeah. Yeah, that we basically highlight on this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Analyzing art. Crusaders almost said grumps. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, QE art grumps. Hey, I'm value, <laughs> and I'm not so value. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, burned. Answer. What's what you got? Um. Also, radio I, play. <laughs> I, I do really enjoy um, friendship is witchcraft. Mm. I'm sure there's some art form besides stuff I look at that I really enjoy, but I spend so much bloody time looking at visual art that I kind of just forget ev- everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that's a fair answer. Cause I kind of, yeah, I, just, I figured you'd probably really have the anything. biggest, you'd probably have the hardest time with that. Hmm. <laughs> Can I just, before I say my answer, I just wanted to point out that the three examples given were quite funny <laughs> <laughs> besides art. And then he included comics, which is art. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then radio with radio play, which I don't think is top three commonalities. Come on, Met Bob. Uh, <laughs> come on, bro. Come on, bro. I don't think I don't think a radio play is very common, although we have one on ESN. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I I it's debatable because there's a lot of PMVs that I would probably say. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of the anthology stuff, or I don't know, there's good animations by Jan and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But because like this doesn't get represented enough fanfics. There's a lot of good fan fiction out there um, by with some really good writers, um, and I will always, to the end of the day, say Background Pony <laughs> was still one of the best things I've read in general. Not I really should read. Fanfics. I feel like a pleb. I just don't read. I it's just read. It's not for everyone. It's it's really not for everyone, but it's it's a tremendous thing if you can if you can get into it, then it is really really good reading. Um, but yeah, very sad. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, background pony to represent all the people out there who read and write fanfics. Hmm. There you go. I knew I knew you were going to say that. Actually, <laughs> I was yep. like, he's going to say background pony. Yep. It's debatable. It's debatable because if I wasn't doing this show, I would be doing PMVs because I'm very much into video editing and video like stuff. I've been doing that for years, mm-hmm. so it's hard for me to not pick like a video. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, that's too easy. Everyone everyone will say, like, 
button mash or snowflake or stuff like that. You know, I wanted to pick something that is kind of out there. Yeah. Hmm. Um, if we're not directly relating this to ponies, because he just says, what's your favorite fan work? Oh, wait, mm. it's fan work. Never mind. That would apply to ponies. Never mind. Yeah. I was saying, what's your favorite, like, art form? Because there is, like, digital comics and online comics I follow, but nah, I think they're not pony ponies. related. Yeah. So. There's your answer. Friendship is witchcraft. Friendship is witchcraft. And <laughs> background pony. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. None of these are new information. <laughs> this is new information. It's all uh, all repeat, yeah. And Flufflepuff. Flufflepuff. But... Yeah. Who, who do we know that it, it annoys Mahauer? Mahauer doesn't like Flufflepuff. He doesn't like Flufflepuff. No, he's the one no, who doesn't like doesn't. eggs. What? <laughs> <laughs> Mahauer? He just doesn't, doesn't trust eggs. He doesn't trust eggs. Oh, right. well, I mean, you can't yeah. really trust them. That's why you break them and eat them. I don't think he dislikes <laughs> Flufflepuff. He just, he just doesn't get the whole fascination. Anyways, <laughs> shout out to Mahauer being... Hating fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, our next week's theme is whoa, the Howard. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> no, it's whoa. not. <laughs> Slow your roll there, Mr. Non Plug Boy. I really like that theme. Sorry. What, Mauer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The man shower yeah. theme? <laughs> man shower. That'd be the best. Yeah. Plugs, guys. Yes. Okay. That, basically, that guy's the best, says everyone, everywhere, ever. Yeah. Uh, well, you know. So, we have a DeviantArt account, which is cutiearcrusaders.deviantart.com. Uh, we have a Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash cutiearcrusaders. There's a Twitter, which is at cutiearcrusade. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash cutiearcrusaders. And we have a Gmail account, which is cutiearcrusaders at gmail.com. Send in your holiday art for the episode that's coming up soon. Slash questions. And questions. Happy holidays. Yay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> if someone sends in one. a picture of a pony doing a hula hoop. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Remember last week when I said someone should make a burned dog? Oh, my no. God. Someone, wait, did it don't happen? bring this up. Did it? We someone, can't bring this up on the show. It happened. Someone <laughs> most definitely nope. made a burned dog. Moving dogue. along. <laughs> It was like it was literally I hate like the day after the podcast came out. I yes. love it. It was like twelve hours after the podcast. I love it. No, nope. I love it. Such end ending. <laughs> Such moving on. So happy. Such so happy. Hate. All right. Awful. Well, next week. What's next week's theme? Uh, next week's theme is gonna be. Oh, no, it's on the screen. Here on the screen. God, we really suck at this. Right here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, I, we've got some stuff in mind. It'll probably be one of the things that is in my head right now. Mm. Anyways, Next week the, is the thing. superhero duo of Mahauer and Burndog <laughs> and their wonderful adventures. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, that is everything for this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Whether or not you're on the live stream or on YouTube, we love you all the same. Make sure to stay tuned after this for another one of our patent pending spoiler casts. Ooh, I hate patents. We're not. We're not, <laughs> pat we're not patenting it. <laughs> um but yeah, we'll be talking about the latest episode after this, so stick around for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. So my name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm Burn. I'm Flutterguy317. And I'm Atmos Park. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure to keep warm out there. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Hello and welcome to the fourth spoiler cast by the QDR Crusaders for season four of My Little Pony. My name is Flutterguy317, and today I am joined by Rainbow Plasma. Hey guys. Burned01. Hi. And Atmos Mark. What's up? And today we're going to be going over episode five of season four, which uh, was called Flight to the Finish. Uh, this is the first time so. we've had all four of us, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. for one reason or another. Yeah. Mm hmm. So yay, we're all together. It, you would you could say we're almost a team, like a flag carrying team. Uh, 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 CMC uh, episode, uh, first one of the season. Yeah, come to expect these now. We, there's gonna really, be at least three or four. Yeah, I really know. heavily. I know, really heavily on the Scootaloo side. This was a very nice. cute uh -huh. episode. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, we mentioned last season that like the 
first Scootaloo episode was really that Sleepless in Ponyville episode, which was mm -hmm. a great episode. But that was kind of like the first one. The other, the other Cutie Mark Crusaders had their own episode. So, you know, it was still a Cutie, Cutie Mark Crusaders episode. It yeah. just had a focus on Scootaloo. This was like the yeah. best episode since Sleepless in Ponyville, am I right? Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I mean, Castle Castlemania was good. <laughs> Castlemania was good. Daring Don't was good. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, shut up. 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 Don't even start. Don't start. No. Do not I'm gonna start. Diss, I'm going to diss so hard on Pinkie Pie episodes. As soon as there's like a Pinkie Pie centric <laughs> episode, we're just like, nope. Bomb. No, nope, Don't like it. <laughs> just bleh. Speaking of, speaking not of enough Pony centric Pies. episodes, it seems to be uh, an RD centric season so far. Yeah. <laughs> Which is I'm okay with. Which is, which is horrible. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> Your name more. was Pinky Dash. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you traitor. Just like Flutter Guy. Yeah. Changing your flutter. favorite ponies. <laughs> no, no, my favorite but no, it, it, so it was it was Cutie Mark Crusader focused. Rainbow Dash was was a side. It could have been any of the other main six. Really. Yeah. yeah. They actually it, they probably had her just to have the the funny dynamic between her and Harsh Winnie, which I thought went really well. Yeah. yeah. That was well, good. I mean, it does make sense because she is the athletic pony besides applejack and like she did have the experience with did have, before, yeah so. so it's it makes sense that she was there yeah right. um so it, what was really funny was uh mish harsh expressions yeah, yeah they, they had um like <laughs> they really took i mean a lot of times when you when you have a storyboarded uh part uh, in my little pony they, they kind of interpret expressions and things like that and um kind of kind of change that into the normal pony facial expressions either front view side view or three-quarter view but obviously in this episode they took that much more to heart and took kind of like direct storyboard drawings yeah. they went um, to town which was, which was interesting frames yeah 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 it was, it was definitely a different facial style for her and uh rainbow dash did it once too um kind of like in mock of her yeah um, <laughs> yeah i like it though it gives it gives uh harsh 20 a little bit more this entire episode gave harsh 20 a little bit more depth which is nice because her character was eh, last season. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I really liked Harsh Winnie in this episode. It was actually really great because she was much more cartoony, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, I think the expressions made it. So, oh yeah, yeah, that helped for sure. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of drawing the, the pictures on the on the chalkboard were good too. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't aware that Rarity is the now the definition of stylish because she drew Rarity on the board. Yep, that was well. <laughs> Yeah, go, go no go. go. <laughs> I was gonna say in um, what was it, the last episode or two episodes ago, mm -hmm. where they um, they had uh, no, it was two episodes ago with Castlevania, where Pinkie Pie had a, a clipboard and it was the the cutie marks were <laughs> yeah. like the, their names. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, it's, it's rarity could be style in the dictionary. There, you know, <laughs> it's like hieroglyphics or whatever. I was gonna say I really like the last drawing on the board. It was like and like and originality, and it's just some pony like balancing on a ball, juggling lobsters. <laughs> like <laughs> yes, originality. Can you lobster think of juggling. anything more original than that, Burn? Because I I, I cannot. Nope. <laughs> That's it, guys. We're done here. We can't be original as that. So <laughs> sorry, <laughs> GG, y'all. We named this the spoiler cast. Do you think this is original at all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I enjoyed the episode though. It was it was really nice to see a the dynamic between Harsh Winnie and Rainbow Dash at the start, and b uh, all the Cutie Marker Studios like interaction and hullabaloo and stuff like that. Hullabaloo. Um, this episode mm. was really depressing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I I I have mentioned many times that I I have enjoyed every single episode of Ponies, and I also enjoyed this one. But I did notice that this one was, uh, at least in first impressions, kind of like a bit darker. Um. I I still to this day hate Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. I, know, I understand they're, necess they're a necessary evil, but that doesn't make me like them anymore. They're horrible human beings uh, who don't get, who don't get <laughs> so good. Who, who honestly, like I'm honestly speaking here, who don't get punished enough for their behaviors. The show brings them up as bullies, and I think that's completely legitimate because a lot of kids go through bullying at a young age. But those characters are not punished enough for mm -hmm. what they do on the show. Um, I mean, they did. They did have to wear a rabbit suit and jump around a watering can in one I, episode. I suppose, but so. there's little, there's little things like that. <laughs> That's I don't their know. purpose it, as villains. I know. I yeah. just, I, I don't. Uh, my dad's always said to me. He, he, he says, um, you know, I, I like to see good behavior rewarded and bad behavior punished. And I guess I, I got a lot of that from him. And, and I just, it just kind of like makes me angry to see this kind of stuff happening and to mm -hmm. not 
you know, have someone who's in a position of power, like a teacher or something, intervene. It's, I think it, it, it kind of hit, a lot of this episode, what people are saying is it hit really close to home with them. And well, it, exactly, because this that. is very reminiscent of real life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The bad yeah. guys don't get punished enough. I, yeah. I suppose, but it's it's also a happy show about ponies, so it does kind of <laughs> annoy me. But again, they're villains, so but what then can you do? But then Scootly learns lessons. Yeah. yeah. I they're, actually they're love it for people. that exact context, though, in yeah. that, I mean, you're physically and emotionally upset by this fact, because that is what's happening, and that is what's happening, and that's the best part. Like, I think that's kind of the purpose, if anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I, they're villains, and, and they're, you know they do their own job it's just it's just a personal the point is you're upset by what they're doing because they're doing something wrong meaning that as characters they're doing a perfect job and doing exactly. what they're supposed to do right i'm not saying they're characterized wrong at all i'm just mm-hmm. saying i don't like their characters because they are bad people and i don't like bad people that's yeah, all well, i was like yeah. saying they're that's, necessary that's the, evil that's the point. obviously <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right yeah that's good though <laughs> well no it's like um it's like discord now his his purpose is to kind of guide the ponies uh but he's but goofy like he's goofy different. and he'll like get you really frustrated because he'll like be talking riddles and stuff like that but at the end of the day like he's there to help teach a lesson these the you know, diamond tiara and silver spoon are, are not like there to teach the lesson but at, at least they do kind of push the lesson i mean i, guess, I, I as... mentioned last week that the reason why i didn't like meridowell and it's the only episode that i haven't liked because there was no redemption at the end of that episode um, and I feel like there's no redemption in these characters. That's the only thing I have to say about it. Like, I really don't want to get into a huge Diamond Tiara mm-hmm. debate yeah. Um, yeah. because there are funny characters when parody and stuff like that. We're like, they're not sorry, right obviously. I know. Um, oh my God. The shark again. I could not, like, separate out um, Silver Spoon and her voice in Friendship is a Craft in this episode. <laughs> I was just like, wait a second, that's not her voice. Oh, wait. No, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, but like it's just there. There's not redeeming. Like Discord has redeeming qualities because he's goofy and he does silly stuff. Trixie, yeah. you know, is over the top, but she's so over the top that it's not a big deal. You know, like the, the, vil- other villains are evil in big showboaty ways. I don't know. There's just nothing. There's not not redeeming qualities for Diamond Tear. The only thing redeeming was. The one line by Silver Spoon this this episode where they're like, "Well, what are we supposed to do? We already called them blank flanks." Yeah. <laughs> Which was hilarious. That was yeah. great. Uh, Anyways, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that. Uh, yeah. song. But you just did. Song was yeah. cute. The song was cute. Yeah. That song was really, really Mulan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So much Mulan. So much Mulan. I, Such Mulan. I said that as I was watching. I was like, I was like, oh, this is totally Mulan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it, it was it, it was good. Um, man, the, those those little kids who voice uh, those characters can really sing. Yeah, they've got they've got mm-hmm. a great they've got great voices, and I love I love you know because whenever the the Cutie Mark Crusaders sing, it's always the three of them singing. You know, yeah, yeah. So, I believe but, it's only Michelle Kreber doing her voice, um, and then they get other singers for the other two. Or wait, no, right. Sweetie Bill's voice. Excuse me, and she does Apple Bloom. So Michelle Kreber does yeah. Sweetie Bill and Apple Bloom singing voice, and then for um, uh, Scootaloo, I believe they have someone else. So I think it's a voice actor. I thought it was Maddie Peters. I thought I think so. she's she does singing I too. I believe. Yeah, I think I think it is. Um, but I, I love I love those kind of songs with the Kingdom Hearts Crusaders because they always have great harmonies in them. And as a singer myself, I I harmonies are like the the icing on a, a good song cake. And and like the chorus is just mm, good. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I the love visual. their whole. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I was gonna say the visuals during uh, that entire song were really awesome, really well done too. They were yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, so it that gave it that whole Mulan feeling again. Yeah, and yeah. They had that weird lighting effect on it again. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I loved that whole routine, like of them prepping for their uh, their big display kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially like the parts with Snowflake, the big uh, steroid pony. Yeah, there's a lot of comic <laughs> relief in that whole scene, like with Snowflake and then the stairs. Mm-hmm. I like the stairs because mm-hmm. she's climbing these stairs and like you can kind of see grass in the bottom. I'm like it's gonna be really small, isn't it? <laughs> then she finally comes with the three steps. That she's looking at her like what? The hell? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Also, at the very end of that song, they did uh, one of those trope kind of things where they all jump up in the air and they like freeze. Yeah. And then it like. The next scene is like them still floating in the Self-mocking air. Self-mocking the trope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the first so couple good. seasons, there was only like a, there was still like a quite a bit of it, but it was, you know, kind of scarce and spread out. 
but in this like these past four episodes it's just been nothing but just like tropes and like mm-hmm. joking cartoon things and there's so many so 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 much of that just like kind of thrown in that it's it's actually really awesome uh makes makes the show a lot more enjoyable for me to watch to have all those silly little things in because I'm like I'm constantly noticing them and you know mm-hmm. kind of giggling at them and laughing at them like the whole breakfast club yeah and then they yeah. like fall <laughs> yeah 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 um so the big thing in this episode was <laughs> the fact that they finally brought up very explicitly that uh, Scootaloo can't fly and mm-hmm. that it's abnormal and that she might not ever be able to fly, which is something that Lauren Faust has described as her vision. Um, but obviously we don't know that. All we know is that in this episode she can't fly, but that is a big point to bring up because it's not something to be taken very lightly. Uh, your mm-hmm. thoughts on that, guys? I'm happy that didn't um, make her fly in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's, I, um... Yeah, I mean... It's never really been explicitly stated that she can't fly. It's always just been kind of like off to the side. But in this episode, it like kind of hit home where mm-hmm. like, you know, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon were just like, you can't fly. And yeah, I, I think, I think that's episode. kind of what hit home with, with Diamond Tiara. It was, it, it was such, it was like really brutal, the whole making fun of someone for a quote unquote disability. Or, you know, um, the fact that there's there's two directions they can go with this. They can either keep with Lauren Faust's vision and have her not fly ever right Mm -hmm. um which is fine uh or they can go with the whole late bloomer thing eventually she gets it maybe after the show ends whatever or it's implied um so there's two different aspects of that but you know as someone who's a late bloomer myself i guess that kind of hit home with me um you know when they were talking about something that was out of out of school lose control and you know making fun of like almost a disability like that it's it's uh it was quite that's what i meant when i said it was kind of depressing about the show because it was quite Mm -hmm. harsh for sure I have to imagine that would hit home a lot more f- than some, especially for like people watching that. Um, but that being said, I really did enjoy how like uh, what's what's the word? I'm I'm thinking of the subreddit like morbid reality, like how morbid it was and how like it just hit home in like reality wise, um, and mm-hmm. that it was much darker. I really enjoyed that fact, and like there was a lot of emotion behind it, and there was some harshness to it, and some definite definite like reality realization when it was like you know like you can't fly and um yeah. it you know, yeah. deeper context in like a cartoon a more serious note and overtone and something that is like we've known to be so lighthearted. Mm-hmm. um and i really enjoyed it for that fact but i i can really um like relate to what you're talking about and how that it yeah it's something that would really um sink to some sink in mm-hmm. there, there's no they, they, that's the way they could have done it there's no other way of doing it yeah. If they were going to approach that subject, it would have it, it had to be that way. And I think they did a good job considering mm-hmm. it had to yeah. be that way. I I agree. Yeah. I like that. Uh another Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go on. No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're making this really great to at Miss Mark, edit. you go ahead. <laughs> okay, no, I've lost what I was going to say. You go. Oh, okay. <laughs> um <laughs> also confirmed is that Scootaloo has a house. That's true. That's true. Um we're not sure if like maybe it's an orphanage still, or maybe People like she on owns, that. maybe she owns a house, or maybe sakes. she does have parents, and maybe it was it maybe it was in the clubhouse. <laughs> maybe she lives in the clubhouse. It's not the outside though. No, or maybe it, she just no, has a house, and we saw her room because you maybe know she's that's why. Like, yeah, the know, writer tweeted about of... it and was like, "She's not homeless." Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> that apparently was a big thing for a lot of people. For some people. Yeah. All right. Well, the biggest thing of this entire episode for me, and the thing that annoyed me the most about this episode <laughs> was the tease at the end um mm-hmm. the tease of getting the cutie mark at the end which in my opinion sucked <laughs> <laughs> and i kind of hated it um and the reason why is just because uh that was an opportunity to give scootaloo a cutie mark would it have been the best opportunity no does life always work that way where it's the best opportunity no um but you know they they could have gone two ways, which is either give her the cutie mark or just ignore that whole fact entirely. But they took that middle ground where they most definitely zoomed in, gave it a moment, had that hopeful music, and then totally ripped it out of there, which I personally am annoyed about. <laughs> I loved it so much. <laughs> yeah, me too. It, yeah. it pissed me off Your so hard. Your displeasure pleases me. <laughs> yeah, what I'm not said. sure what camp you guys are in, but uh, I personally would love to see the Cutie Mark Crusaders get the, their Cutie Marks because I feel like it's we've oh, reached yeah. the point I now would where too, it's season yeah. four. Not, 
yet. Yeah, like not I, yet, I, and I think, not I think it'd be fine. not individually. I want them to get it at the same especially, time. Yeah, especially yeah. not this early in the season. There's there's two ways. See, That's here's true. the thing. There's two ways that the Cutie Mark Crusaders can properly get their Cutie Marks without pissing everyone off, right? So, one, they get them all at the same time, right? That's standard. Honestly, that's probably the most likely scenario. That's what I want. The second version, the second version is that over the span of a season, they all get their cutie marks, and they can do it where they get one gets one of them or two get one of them. And, and the reason why they might do that is because there's a lot of episodes to be had about one character having a cutie mark and you know the dynamics that happens with that. You know, um, so there's there's two options they can do there, which is either do it over a season stre- stretched out or do them all at the same time. All I'm saying is, if they were planning on doing the former option, this would be the perfect time to do it. Now they have to do them all three at the same time. Mm-hmm. Or are they going to keep delaying it even further, which would annoy the crap out of them? If, <laughs> if a Cutie Mark Crusader does not get a Cutie Mark in this season, I'm going to be annoyed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and so they had an opportunity here. And it's not that they didn't do it. It's that they teased it. And then they didn't do it, which annoys yeah. me. It's so. It, <laughs> it, it. I ran. I ranted to Flutter Guy this morning mm-hmm. when we watched it so hard because it annoys me that they teased it. That's the thing that annoys <laughs> me. It's not that they don't have it. You know yeah. that that's a separate thing. It's just the fact that they they zoomed in. They had the music, and it was it, it like the stars aligned for a moment, and it totally could have happened. Yeah. And then they're like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we ever do that? Uh, Stupid. Yeah. I, I I thought it was a great moment too. I like when they zoomed in. It was like the music is like a. What what's happening? Huh. Um, and, but I also, when they were zooming in at the end, um, I I thought it was zooming in on her wings. And I, I was thought like, oh, I thought the wings wait, as well. Yeah. yeah, that's sad. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I there was like a double emotion there. Yeah, I, I had that. I had the feeling too. I definitely at first I thought it was the wings, and I was like, are they gonna do something with the wings? Like, are the wings gonna suddenly grow in front of her or something? <laughs> you know, like a side yeah. magic. Um, and then about halfway through the zoom, and I was like, wait, cutie mark. <laughs> and then yeah. it didn't happen and it's like it took my emotion like I had like such a roller coaster from like weird uh. like, <laughs> like like expecting something and then not really and then like oh my gosh super high cutie mark and then it immediately cuts away it's like oh super low <laughs> no cutie mark well then good yeah. and that did exactly what it needed to do it made you feel no it didn't it made you <laughs> it feel it didn't need to do that it, did. it absolutely it was didn't perfect. Oh, the feels. it, it, it made was you not feel. perfect I am annoyed. <laughs> Success, I mean, mission accomplished. I mean, I that's why we all watch this stupid show. So, because <laughs> we get something better out of it. And the simple fact that you're here complaining for to use a word that's not as bad as what I want to use is, is great for me, especially. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I hear I you just complain about guy. it. I described a Flutter guy. I said it's 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 an annoyance that doesn't mean that it was bad necessarily. Yeah. Even though mm-hmm. they they shouldn't have done the tease. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I think they should have. It's not. It's yeah, not. It's not an annoyance that's really that bad. It's like imagine you're sitting here and like a video game is coming out in two months and you're just sitting here being like, oh, I wish it was out now. You know, like it's it's or like waiting for season four is like, oh, I really wish it was out now. Oh, I'm so angry that's not out right now. Like it's just angry at the situation not necessarily <laughs> angry it's, it's because you're so into it right um yeah that that's the mm-hmm. reason just a bit of a conspiracy. i'm still annoyed though and i'm completely <laughs> legitimate in my annoyance that they tease that just a little bit of a conspiracy yeah. theory i have heard rumors that that butterfly that flew past was involved with the cutie mark because i don't know if and you then, remember the butterfly when she was real down and depressed on the stage and the butterfly flew past that gave her strength to keep going that's nah. That's a lame conspiracy uh, I theory. I throw that out immediately. <laughs> I mean, a butterfly also scared snowflakes, so yeah, you could take that's it. That's kind of funny. I, I laughed it, really. <laughs> Butterfly, yeah, butterflies have, have caused much damage to me too in the past. Yeah, it was, it was good to okay. see him again. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so one one final thing about the uh, the cutie mark at the end is this would have been the perfect opportunity for them if they wanted to space out the three. Exactly. Uh, just because they have they have the keys with the box. Like that's going on, which they're gonna find throughout the season, I'm sure. And then they have cutie mark crusaders with cutie marks, possibly if they're actually gonna do that this season. And so I'm guessing that because they didn't do it this time, they're probably gonna do it all three at the same time if they're gonna get them this season. It's like this right. season's so. full of potential. I know. I, I just like them. The final thought on the cutie marks is I I would caution them to build it out to build it up to be too much. Because mm-hmm. if you build people up way too much and you start teasing with that, then you're really going to have to bring it. 
Wait like, for season five. Exactly. <laughs> like if you yeah. if you tease for too long, people will get disinterested with it. And if you tease and then you See, do something you and it's not as good as people thought, then it can it can it can backfire. You, That's all I'm you saying. You say that, but Assassin's Creed has a very successful market. Whatever you want to call it, just saying. Yeah. Well. That wasn't really relevant. <laughs> it was completely relevant. We'll take it. Anyway, so and on that note, don't tease that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it could go either way. And I'm sure that once they have their cutie marks, there's a lot of stories with them still. So of it's course, not like one of those of things that has to happen. But, you know. I right, like so, this episode. Overall. Yeah. I want to say, go. on my final closing thing, that pretty much every single complaint that Rainbow Plasma brought up, I thought was like a plus and added to the exactly. episode for me. Yep. And I mean that. Like, I thought I loved those facts of like the like the teasing, how it hits home, um, the morbid reality of it, and then like even like the teasing at the end and stuff. Like, I, I thought that was great. I'm more I'm of a feel say. good kind of guy. <laughs> I'm a feels kind of guy. All the feels. All right. Oh, on up. that note, we're going to wrap it up. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll do another broadcast next week after QD Arc Crusaders. Uh, so my name is FlutterGuy317. Made me feel it was great, and I'm burned. I feel. What is the order in this? Uh, uh, Rainbow <laughs> Plasma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Atmo Feels. Why can't Aww. I hold all these feels? See you guys so many next feels. week. Bye, guys. Bye.